I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. I was out in the woods one time and it was early morning. I told you this story and I came across a pack of coyotes and instead of running, they turned and kind of, ah. well, first I panicked, then I froze, and then I thought, I better do something. You know, it's, I, I didn't expect this. This is Ohio. I mean, we put up with Ohio for certain reasons. One being there's no poisonous snakes and there's less bugs. Come on. I mean, and, and now I'm in Ohio, and I've got these coyotes around me. I, it was fearful. So I took my bow, and I waved it over my head, and then they turned, and they scurried off in the woods. I threw my bow, and I ran and climbed a tree. Amen. Come on. <laughs> and while I was in the tree, okay, it was, it was the tree I was hunting out of, but I did run, and I climbed up it. And so then I had to climb back down once the, the sun started to come up, get my bow, and climb back up there. And then I re- spent the rest of my time reading, how dangerous are coyotes? How often do attacks happen? <laughs> You know, what is the likelihood of being eaten by a coyote when you're in the woods? And even though everything I read said, dude, you're fine. I probably scared them more than they scared me from the standpoint of I came over this hill. They turned around and saw me there, and it was like kind of fight or flight. So they just turned around like, ah. But uh, anyway, I was like, okay, I probably was not in any real danger. However, the next time I was in the woods at dark, I had a gun with me. <laughs> and throughout the remainder of that hunting season, I had a gun with me. Why? Because of expectations, and even though it's like, oh, I'm fine, it's not, I'm, I, it was, I was okay, <laughs> almost died, but I mean, it wasn't really a big deal, I just, <laughs> it wasn't a big deal, but the picture that's in my spirit is so very important, and if you've, if you've been cultured to expect great things from God, I believe you can live into that moment, but you may have been cultured in your world and in your life and in your household to expect nothing out of life at all, nothing from God, and that's what you're going to live into, and it's the unfortunate part. And that's what, if I could get that across to you today, to raise your expectations. And sure, sometimes maybe, they, maybe you may not experience it. Maybe people will let you down. Maybe some of your fears will be realized God is still there, and don't let that take control of you. Maybe, you know, the, the number one fear. What's the number one fear people have? Come on, it's, it's a known thing. Come on, yell it out. What is it? Public speaking. The rest of you didn't say it because you were scared. Like, I can't speak in public. <laughs> a study showed that, you know, that people fear public speaking more than death. And that means if you're at the funeral doing a eulogy, you would rather be the guy in the casket. It's like, hey, move over, bud. You want to switch places with me here? <laughs> Why? Because of expectations, because of thoughts that we allow, because of rejection, because of different things. And the Word of God is powerful, but I think we can overemphasize. Listen to me. You're going to have to go with me on this one. I think we can overemphasize the the power of planting those seeds and underemphasize the power of letting them grow. And if you're not getting a return on your investment of the word and your spirit means we need to stop and acknowledge, God, I received this word, I received that word, I received this word. Do you have a thief in your life called fear and doubt that's uprooting that seed? We see in Mark 4, it talks about the cares of the world, right? So we've got a powerful seed. I believe that it does change and transforms our our lives. I believe it is good. But I also see that the Bible says that the cares of life choke out the word. So don't underemphasize the cares that you are using to pull out the the word. Don't underemphasize the stuff that God wants to unpack so that it doesn't have power over you anymore. Because those cares, they'll stop the seed from growing. The word of God, Mark 4 It says in uh, 419, it says, The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of things uh, things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Unfruitful just means there's no results, all right? Don't get caught up in fruit. People start thinking apples, oranges, pears. It just means results. There's no fruitfulness of the word. And I think of how much word has been planted in my spirit throughout the years, but how much of that word did I receive a crop from? How much word did I allow to grow? Many, many times in my life, the cares of life allowed me to pull out the word of God that was planted in me, allowed me to say, no, God, not me, not me. You know, I'm not going to receive that. And I continue to pull out the word of God. So what seed's the most powerful? The word you allow to stay planted. Jack and the beanstalk, right? You plant those, those beans, it's going to grow. But if you don't, it ain't. So the cares of the world, the cares, cares are the struggles that we may go through. The things that gnaw at your mind, that anxiety that you wake up with in the morning. Those thoughts, those feelings, those concerns, 
The deceitfulness of riches, Jesus, we oftentimes see this paralleled in the word of God talking about our trust system. So the deceitfulness of riches is people that, it's not that they're, they're oh, we got to have more money. They're after the things of this world necessarily, but they put their trust in that. And Jesus, many times throughout his ministry, he paralleled money with trust. Is money wrong? No. Trust in money, that's a problem. So if you put your trust in it, and then we also see that lust, lust is never fulfilled. If you're struggling with an area of lust in your life, whether it be for things, sexual immorality, or a long list of things, it will never be fulfilled. So you think, if I could just scratch that itch, maybe that will go away. Wrong. It's going to lead you down a dark path of desire that will increase in your life and lead you to the next drug, lead you to the next high, lead you to the next moment. And you'll get to a place and you say, how did I get here? Why? Because you were allowing things to be planted in your spirit that kept the word of God. Y'all talk to people that are not living for God, and I, you know, I'm amazed the conversations I have, and it's always that God was unfaithful. And I'm like, look, I'm a pastor, and I'm just gonna be real honest with y'all. This past year, doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting to start my year, that's the first year I've ever started in that way. I would love to say every morning I wake up with a song in my heart and a dance in my step. I don't. (laughs) I don't wake, I don't always wake up ready to serve God, ready to feed on his word. I'm like, God's not unfaithful. I am. I don't have to, you know, he's good. I'm the one that I don't trust myself. God, help me to keep the right things planted in the streams of my heart so that it can grow and that I can stand up as an oak of righteousness. Come on, am I preaching to y'all? Because you know what I'm, people that have walked with God, you know. So spiritually, it's the same way. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. And then once again, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So if your heart is troubled, now we've got to recognize that it's my job to not allow my heart to be troubled. What am I going to do in that moment? See, you are blessed. God has called you blessed. He's called you chosen. And the enemy has to work behind the scenes to get you in fear and doubt because that's the only way he can keep you from fulfilling the promises of God. And so, but isn't that interesting? The only way the enemy can stop you is by getting you to come out of agreement, by getting you to stop realizing that your father is good, that your father, he loves you, that you can cast your cares upon him he lo- for he loves you. His holy presence, when you have the presence of Father God in your life, that's oftentimes what fear really is. It's, not, it's a, our lack of understanding of sonship, of being a daughter, of being a son, of living in the house of God, of that protective parent that, that guards their kids. And you may not have ever had a protective parent in your life, but let me tell you how God is. His spirit is good. My son, he, uh, a couple weeks ago, he kept waking up in the night and we're about to have another baby. And I'm just like, man, okay, look, look, man. You're almost four years old. Man up, you know, stay in your bed. <laughs> and so I did, I, it wasn't like that. But anyway, but I'm like, this isn't good. We cannot have him getting in the bed at night with us and stuff. And he can't, can't have him waking up and like being worried or anything like that. And uh, so I took, I have a robe. I like to keep the house 65 degrees, you know, and so you can, but anyway, you know, but I have this, this robe and I took the robe and I said, this robe is blessed. And it has daddy's anointing on it. And I wrapped him up in my robe. And Le- Alicia will attest to this, right? I said, son, you're going to sleep through the night tonight and you're going to have a great night's sleep. And that night, we did not hear a peep out of him, did we? The next night, the same thing. Next night, now I need to buy a new robe. But anyway, you know, <laughs> why? Because it has the essence of daddy on it. Why? Because he, it's something that he attributes to daddy. It speaks peace to his heart. Why? Because daddy... Daddy's strong. Daddy will protect me. Daddy, because I tell him, I was like, Daddy won't let anything happen to you. You don't worry. That monster, that monster under your bed, him and I have an agreement. So you better listen. No, I I never say no. I joke. (laughs) But, but, but daddy's here and your father's here as well. And he understands and he knows those pains. He knows where they started, how they, how they've got to where they are. And if they're immobilizing you and keeping you, once again, fear is masked by inactivity. And so if you feel like you've just stopped and that your life is not moving on, then it's something that you've got to deal with. And you've got to step back on your God-given purpose and design and to pursue God and to see his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 27. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour of your life? to your life. No. So take the weight of your life off your shoulders now and give it to God. Stop feeling, stop feeling like if it's going to be, it's up to me. Stop feeling like I have to make my way. Stop feeling all of these pressures, all of these anxieties, and all of these fears and give those over to God and create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can dwell. We can make 
our atmosphere of our households, of our, of, our, of our physical being, we can make the atmosphere attractive to the Holy Spirit. And it, by staying in that place of creating, we can also create an atmosphere of fear and death. We get to decide the things we bring into our house. We get to decide the things that we bring into our tent and the things that we decide to remove as well. And so by, to create a, an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit, listen to these things. Uh, Psalms 56, 3, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So let's create an atmosphere that's attractive to God, okay? Let's create an atmosphere that's attractive to his kingdom. Once again, I talk with people all the time who have never served God, never looked to God, and then they gripe about, where's God at? I was like, God is knocking at the door, man. God wants to work in your life. If you just open up your heart, he'll do a work. If you seek him. First of all, an atmosphere of faith. Here's three things. Atmosphere of faith. That's desire, agreement, and expectation. An atmosphere of faith is attractive to the Holy Spirit. It, it, it expects him to move, coming into agreement with his word, desiring to see him move, and expecting him to move. It, it's an atmosphere of expectation that something is going to happen with God. Unity, that's agreement with him, but it's also agreement with other people. We see in the word of God in Acts, as they were gathered together in one accord, they were there in unity. And that's when God was able to move. His Holy Spirit was able to enter the room. And it mentioned more than once that they were in unity. Unity is not always agreement with the person next to you. It's agreeing on the right thing. It's the right foundation. But some of our strength comes from our differences. So you, we may not agree on all the details about everything, but we're in unity in th the sense of our expectation is the same. So we've agreed on the right things. We've agreed on the, on the, the, the things that actually move. And in marriage, very important, unity. Unity, how do two walk together unless they agree, the word of God says. Action, action is the third. Step out of the boat. Step out of that, that place. Take off the garment of, of sadness and put on the garment of praise. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. Turn on some worship music. So maybe, maybe it's just an action where it's just something simple. I'm going to turn on some worship music. I'm going to turn off the TV. It may feel, feel silly up front. It may feel a little bizarre up front may feel uncomfortable depending on the climate of your household, right? It, the, the climate of your marriage, kind of how, how things have been going. Like, hey, let's pray, babe. <laughs> what? You know, it may be a little bit awkward. But stop. Turn on the word of God. And, who, and I'm I promise you, it will probably feel a little awkward up front if that's something that you don't do very often. And just be like, okay, we're not going to judge either one of us. Let's turn on some worship music. We'll do what Pastor Tim says. Turn it on. And you can kind of walk your floor. You can kind of pray. Pray over your household. Okay, you know, cast out. If there's something spiritually that's not supposed to be there, Jesus never prayed to the Father to cast out a spirit. He told it to go. So that's your job. This is, this is my dominion. This is my authority. I take authority over this household. I take authority over this. We walk in agreement. We walk in unity. We repent for allowing any unclean thing into this household. And God, we bring it under the blood. We thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus over this place. And so that's what it looks like. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And that's the, the next thing. Cast that anxiety on him. Put it on his shoulders. Take that off your shoulders and give it to God. Join us for more from the Faith Over Fear series next time on Fixing the Money Thing.